Uh, good day, everybody. Welcome to a vlog in an EV vlog. I even got my vlog glasses on this time. What do you think? You like them? Should I keep them or not? I think I should keep mine being EV vlog and all. So yes, yeah, so this week in EV news in Australia and also renewable news. All that good news. Also, awesome news if an Australian actually wants to breathe, which is pretty cool. The um, airing, I think, pronounced coal power station in New South Wales, which is New South Wales, one of the big, biggest coal power stations, is shutting down five years earlier, 2025, just three years away. A coal power station will be shutting down, which is fantastic news. Oh, but of course, the, um, the usual cosplayers, Mr. Cameron, whinging and carrying on, stating that um, yeah, wind, yelling at clouds are essentially telling everybody that you can that it's going to mean the end of New South Wales and it's going to destroy all of New South Wales' economy and it's bad news. Really, how many times are they going to keep flogging this fucking dead horse with coal? I don't know. Oh yeah, but also, they're replacing the power station with a 700 megawatt battery. So that's good. Oh, and also in Hunter Valley, I think there's like a billion dollars worth of renewable energy projects going in in that same part of the world in Hunter Valley to replace the power from the coal power station. So Mr. Cosplay, you know, Stop trying to push your freaking family's coal interests on Australian public, please. Thank you. Also, I wonder if that's got anything to do with the 250 gigawatts of installed solar now in Australia. Also, yeah, there's on top of that, there's a 1,300 megawatt wind farm being planned off the coast of Victoria. I mean, Bass Strait is known for being windy, right? <laughs> so, wind equals power. Why haven't we done what they're doing in Europe and put wind turbines like where there's wind off the coast in windy parts of Australia? I, I, I don't get it. Why aren't we doing this? But at least, yeah, anyway, we are. Well, technically we are. Because, um, yeah, this has been approved. So that's cool. Yes, I know. A flogger glasses change. Oh, yeah, this video brought to you by my GoPro camera, my phone, my notes, and my vlog glasses. And the best EV on the planet, Mitsubishi Army. Anyway, EV news in Australia this week. It's actually been quite a lot, and it's been really good. We have BYD, which um, had their unveil just the other night. Tesla Tom did a great video covering the unveiling. Made a mess on the floor, which I think is kind of disturbing looking at a car charger, but you know, each of their own. Yes, it's called the Auto 3, and here comes a guy on a noisy motorbike. Electric people, be quiet. Anyway, yes, the Auto 3 was revealed. Between about forty-four to $47,000, I'm not sure if that's drive away or not, but you know, with rebates, it probably will be about that much, take away the um, on road costs and stuff like that. Fantastic, it appears to have a range of between about in reality, maybe 300 kilometers to maybe 450 for the, the two different battery types, which is all good news. And it's obviously it's um, priced to compete with the um, MG or maybe a little bit more expensive than the MG. So if you're in that sort of market, which is around about the um, $40,000 mark, yeah, it's almost like um, Toyota Camry price, isn't it? I'm not sure, but yeah, a definitely good range EV for the money, which is um, yes, definitely needed in Australia as it is right now. It also has a blade battery, if that matters. I mean, does it really? As for looks, well, I haven't really seen it from um, Tom's video, but I've seen video, I had a look at the website. From the side on, it almost looks like an MG, which is um, kind of interesting. Then again, all these modern cars like SUVs, they all look, um, all look pretty much the same anyway, don't they? Also on EV News in Australia too, look at the Polestar. Polestar seems to be quite a good car. I haven't seen one in real life yet because they're not in Australia yet, funnily enough. Strange as that. But, um, from what I've seen online, other reviews, they seem like a very good, capable, long-range, well-performing EV. And if you want one, you can go to their website now and you can order one. You can configure it right now. So go check. No, don't go check. Watch the video first and go check. If you configure it, you probably get delivery around about July, they're claiming on the website. But if you order a pre-configured one, we don't get to choose your options and your colour and interior colours and that sort of stuff. They're claiming delivery by March, middle of March. That's like three weeks away. So Polestar 2 is coming on the road within three weeks. So, um... Yeah, if you're interested, definitely worth a look at. So that's some fantastic EV news in Australia. Oh yes, and also, the, uh, beside the Auto 3, there was also the Dolphin, which is, I've heard a fair bit about in China. It's sold as the Dolphin in China, which looks like a, um, a Corollas type size EV. I'm not sure about range yet, but their um, the next port is a company that's importing it from China on behalf of BYD. And they're claiming, oh, it's a Magpie. It's out of breeding season, so it won't suit me, so I'm pretty safe. I don't have to put any weird sticks on my head like that. Yes, December, they're claiming, available in Australia from December. As for pricing, who knows? But they should be pretty cheap. I'm hoping they're going to be cheap. It's a cheap EV. It's probably Australia's most affordable EV right now. Other things people are complaining about a lot are petrol prices. I've seen them the last couple of days around about $2 a litre. 
which is well, doesn't worry me or if any of the owners. But unfortunately, it does hurt a lot of people, which is a bugger. And we need obviously cheap EVs to get here to help people move into cheap EVs like the MG or the um, BYDs. But they're coming. Oh yes. But there was a story in the ABC on the news and a few other um, websites claiming that is the petrol price enough to force people to buy EVs? And they're claiming that the price of petrol will have to double to like $4 a litre before a v EV becomes economically viable and therefore it's still not worth buying an EV yet. Essentially is what the story's like the gist of the story is trying to tell everybody. Um, so the issue with that is, you know, listen, like, if you're gonna buy a car based purely on your financial situation and what it's cost to run, then every car on the road would be one of those Kia Picanto things which cost like $12,000 $12, brand new and, and run, it, run on a very little amount of fuel. But people don't, people buy cars that they want to drive, people buy them for the way they look, the performance, so saying people shouldn't buy EVs because of the dollar value is just, just one metric. I mean, what price, can you put on your own health? This is the biggest, one of the big factors with an EV, as um, Dr. Sally is finding out with her research into exhaust pollution and stuff like that, is that, and also others can probably attest, like if, um, Tesla and the Gong, and also again, Tesla Tom can attest that going EV is not only better for you, but better for your family as well. You have noticeable improvement in your, in your health, in your lung capacity, especially for asthma and stuff like that. So your people should be able to, should have to factor that into the purchase of an EV other than just straight up cost. Yes, one more thing. MG are apparently selling wall chargers from their dealerships, which is interesting. This is sort of good news, unless you own a, um, a business selling wall um, aftermarket wall chargers like Zappies and stuff like that. Might be a bit of a, a, bit of a com big competition coming your way from MG, apparently. Okay, just like with website here, apparently um, they have a seven kilowatt version and an 11 kilowatt, hour, the 11 kilowatt version, and they start at prices around $2,000, so Maybe people like Zappy and stuff haven't got the much to have out after all, anyway. But. That's the solar race car team arriving. That's, that's cool. Where's the team, the solar team? Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next vlog or road trip or road test. I've got one on the way. This thing. Might as well, you know, if you're going to practice your own car reviews, might as well do it in your own cars, right? Again, bye.